Tabletops will start after the following messages. Are you looking for something comfortable to wear and keep your brain warm while playing tabletop games? Daily Dose of Yarn makes handmade, customized beanies for all of your style and comfort needs. She can even help you with a custom beanie to represent your favorite character. Check out Daily Dose of Yarn on Instagram and Etsy to order your new favorite beanie today. Hey, cool people. Do you like mead, magic, and long walks in the icy tundra? Ever wonder what your sled dogs are thinking about? Why not cap off your night with a frosty tabletop adventure? You will come to love my beef cliff. You're at the common room. Go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse us. Excuse me, dog cliff. Uh, what's your yeah. favorite food? Ah, uh, sausages, probably. No, you look like a strong lot, but uh, I've got more friends than you. Carnelian's like shortened on the ground and he's standing on you top of the table. You know what you have to do. You know what you have to do. Carnelian stabs him in the butt. What did he say? <laughs> he likes sausages. Oh my god, me too. <laughs> right, I'll sit beside Wade and start carving his rod. Oh, oh my god. Sweater. Sweater, my rod's nearing completion by the looks of things. Unless the four of you can stop them. Well, grab your Ugg boots and join Reflex Save every Wednesday on your favorite podcast platform. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Tabletop. Today we're talking about high level play, but guess what? That's not the big news. The big news is that tomorrow is our first anniversary of the podcast. That's right, one year of podcasting. It's all thanks to you, our lovely audience. Thanks so much for listening. And for the entire week, we're going to be releasing a episode every day. So today and tomorrow are going to be new episodes, and then the rest of it will be our favorites from the past year. I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for supporting Tabletopped. Welcome back to another episode of Tabletop. Today we are going to talk about high level play. I'm Nick, your host, and today I have with me around the table. It's your old buddy Daniel, once again back at the table. <laughs> yeah, it's Franco. Me and Daniel will be playing the anti high level play uh, people at this table. Uh, over to you. And I, I'm Shade, and I might be. I don't know how you feel about it, really, Nick. So I might be the guy who. Supports high level play. <laughs> I'll, well, that's a great place to start. Let's talk about the things that we don't like and do like. I'll start. Well, with we can what? talk about what it is. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah we <laughs> Man, you fucking got me. I got um, your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. High level play. Um, uh, we can talk about in a lot of different systems. There, there are versions of this, but for the sake of simplicity, let's talk about D and D as the framework. Um, anything above like tenth level for me is like high level play. Um, and yes, especially that's correct. <laughs> and especially when you're up at like level twenty or things like that, and you have the full suite of your um, your playbook, which is the monster of the week thing. Powers. Your, yeah, your powers. Then um, then you sort of become this sort of you know epitome of a certain thing. And the way I feel about that is that it is very hard to DM for, <laughs> but it can be very fun to play. Mm -hmm. And I also think that when people go into games, especially new players, they often write themselves a character that makes sense to be a 10th level plus character. Yep. Uh, and that is what people are excited to play generally. They're like, hey, like I, in my example, uh, Roland was a, like a, a husband to somebody who was killed by the, the grim reaper of death, these Valkyries that came in and stole her soul and his child's soul. And so he's been, fighting his way across the continent, trying to track them down and like exact revenge, make sure this never happens to anyone else. And then it's like, and you're level one. <laughs> so um, starting at like a, a high level game or something like that can solve a lot of those problems and allow people to really dig into a different type of story and allow themselves to play a different type of character, which I'm going to put in the positive column. The other column is that I think that it can take away a lot of stakes and it also can just be really hard to DM for. Um, I will never, I, I would not like to DM for a high level campaign for a long period of time. Like I, I think that when we got to the end of Lakewood or um, 
you know, other games I've Monster ran, of the Week. Monster of the Week, but yeah. it still happens in that too when yeah. you just have a bunch of powers and stuff. Um, you guys were only at the height of your powers for like two episodes. <laughs> and then I was like, done, we're done. <laughs> and, you're, and you're not that powerful. Yeah, it's a kind of a different yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah. But, but still. You're I mean, pretty powerful. Yeah, you just, yeah. you have a lot more level le- levers to pull, you know? Yep. And you yep. basically have a Options. lot more narrative power too because a lot of things, like an upgrade you can take is Every time you roll a um, act under pressure, if you get a 12 plus, which at the end of a campaign, you can have plus threes on a lot of things. Um, if you get a 12 plus, you get to do exactly what you wanted to do the way you say that you do it. <laughs> and it's like, whoa, that's huge narrative power because I can say like, I pull the eye out of the monster and then do a backflip onto a motorcycle and drive away. It's like, great, <laughs> you did that, but I guess. Act under pressure? Um, <laughs> you know, maybe, I don't know. The parameters of that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's my feelings on it. Let's go to the negative Nancy's. Daniel, well, I was going to just uh, put a little thing onto what you just said. It's like I ran the Canaries from 1 yeah. to 20. Yeah. And I have to say, definitely once we got into the higher level stuff, running it, if you're, you're playing up to that level, uh, and I guess what I said when I was against high level play, I guess I'm against starting out at a high level. Mm. When you earn it, it kind of makes more sense mm. narratively to keep telling that story. Um, with the canaries, like people got that powerful, and it was like this story kind of made sense. Um, and I feel like I don't mean to to rash shade here, no, please. But we're currently building level twenties for a, uh, a campaign that Shade's going to run, and I'm building this character. I'm looking at it, and I'm choosing all of his different powers and feet. I'm like, but what would, what would he have needed this for? What made him choose this power or that power? You mean you're thinking more about your character? <laughs> your backstory? And it's like, so, but to make a good character for this campaign, it's like, okay, all these are already locked in. If you play it from level one, those decisions are kind of like, I, I think you can kind of tell the story, this is what happened. And now you're like, okay, this is all just happening at once. One thing- I would like to build it slowly over time versus... That's why I'm playing a sense, but you shouldn't have picked something new and it'll tell you. I actually feel how dare you? <laughs> they're on my side of this argument. I actually I'm saying it's a like, challenge that's presenting yes. that just you know that wouldn't be there from yeah. the beginning. From one to twenty, yeah. I actually feel the exact opposite. <gasps> I'm sorry. Yes, I, please. I, I just I feel like when because when I think of the canaries, the most defining moments in that campaign that I like pull out, I'm like, oh man, remember when this happened? A lot of it was low level play yeah. because it was dangerous mm-hmm. and like things had consequences. And then when we got to high level play, I sort of felt like, um, you know, you're kind of a god. And so you're kind of walking around through these mere mortals and kind of doing whatever you want. And nothing has as much consequence. That is kind of exactly how it felt. Yeah. Like, I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm a literal time traveling god. Yeah. And it's, and it's nothing to for like how you ran it. I don't think there is a way to, to go. do it without doing that. Yeah, exactly. Especially with, because you were taking us to to small villages that were sort of like technologically not super advanced. So it's like, mm. what are they going to do when a level 20 walks in? It's like, I want that. <laughs> it's like, you can't do anything. Right. Um, whereas with the... Stuff yeah, we, we were, started governments. <laughs> yeah, we started governments. And when we were, when we started building these level 20s, I have built a character named Oliver who is a survivor from a world where a lich has essentially turned it into a dead world, a, like a zombie apocalypse sort of killed the entire world except for him. He was able to escape this reality. And so he's a level 20. But like, I feel like when I was building it out, I was like, oh man, with that backstory, like he took survival and he took um, like a medicine because he had to tend to his own wounds and he had to find his own food. And like he took, uh, even when it came down to, because he's a gunslinger, what sh- kind of shots I did, I was like, he had to do the dead eye shot like very quick. He had to learn how to aim very precisely because they only died when you shot him in the head. And then he had to learn how to do like blah, blah, blah. And then the very last thing that he learned was disarming shot. It's like, why would he ever need that? <laughs> and so like it became for me, like it was it was more fun because I got to build into like a, a fantasy and backstory that I had already built for him in my head. You know what I mean? Right. Dead eye is a trademark of rock stars. So you <gasps> can't say it. Oh no, oh, no. <laughs> but we're a review, so <laughs> yeah, we're we're just reviewing. Fair use, fair use, parody, parody. <laughs> I think that the arguments of it's hard to DM for completely valid. Um hard to build an encounter. Yeah, to build sure. an encounter for specifically. Yeah. Yes. That's thank you. That was what I or set up really like a say. 
challenge or the trap. Yeah, or yeah I mean, it, like it's certainly much more difficult, and that's not really what I'm looking for when I'm at a tabletop game. Um, encounters are fun, and I want the opportunity to engage with them and have fun with them. And yeah, I sometimes want to be threatened or, or scared, but that's not the be all end all. That's that's a part of it. I want to experience a character. I want to see characters do interesting things. And why what one of the things that really resonates with me for a high level play as both a player and a DM is you have everything to lose when you are low level and you have nothing to lose when you're high level in my mind and i you, you would imagine it would be the reverse but frankly because you 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 could just take bigger swings at these high levels and you could do more interesting things with the results. um at least in my mind i don't know i i think that also what it allows you to do kind of on that idea and you can correct me if i'm I'm mistaking, mistaking what you're saying, but part of it is that going back to the Powered by the Apocalypse thing, that it does give you more narrative control. Yeah. Because when you decide you want to take a big swing, you're like probably going to succeed, you know, like, or even if you take a mid sized swing, you're probably going to succeed. And, but, but also um, it's so much. So if, you, if you take a big swing at a low level and you screw up, you're probably dead. Yeah. That character's done. If you take a big screen, screen at a high level, you may not die, but it is so much more embarrassing yeah. that you fucked up. <laughs> it's way more embarrassing. It just sucks at a low level when, oh, shit, you mean this thing can engulf me and I, there's no way I can escape? That hurts. Ghost touches me and I instantly die. Yeah, that hurts. I mean, yeah. it's fun. It's fun and you'll remember it forever. <laughs> Daniel's just, shaking his head example, slowly. Easy example, Daniel. <laughs> but the, 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 on the contrary of that, there were times where Bill was like level three. He was in a tavern, started some shit. The whole tavern came to kill Bill and he had to like jump out of a window and run away. And like there were a lot of contested roles. Yeah. It was a big swing. And the success, like in my mind, I'm like, I remember that forever. Yeah. Um, well, so but that's the thing. The yeah. successes feel way more mm -hmm. just like rewarding uh, at the the low levels. Yeah. The failures feel way more rewarding at the high levels, mm -hmm. and I think that goes both ways for the DM and the player. Interesting, mm -hmm. Franco. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Classic Franco answer. I guess, I guess uh, you know, high level play could be okay. Um, when I was running Argot. Um, I mostly, it was, it was my first campaign and it was sort of like, okay, I'm going to just run this and give milestones per these 13 islands. And then that gets them to, it wasn't 13 milestones, but, um, <laughs> by the end of it, you guys were level 16. Yeah. And then after that campaign, you guys were level 17. And so pretty high level play. Once mm -hmm. you guys got to that point, like it was very much like, I'm pretty sure you guys got from like seven to 16 yeah. on those islands. Like, it was insane. Mm -hmm. yeah, we were there for a yeah. while. Like, seven. It was the gauntlet. <laughs> it was the gauntlet, yeah. Like, it was just, it was a big sandbox that I set up that, so that I could do everything that I've ever wanted to do as a dungeon master in D&D &D, and then never DM again. <laughs> Honestly, one thing that we never explored um, story wise was that Hespro, like, hunted us in there for a month or two or two weeks or whatever. And we came back like literal gods. <laughs> we were yeah. like, level threes go in one side, level sixteens come out the yeah, other. Yeah. We well, never was, really, yeah. we never really talked about how Hasbro would have been like, "What the fuck happened to these?" Yeah, people? he was, he was immediately afraid. Of <laughs> yeah, <that>. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's also, I mean, that kind of gets back to that point of having the time, because so many players, especially new players, will come in with that it, kind of uh, inflated idea of what their character is. And, you know, and they're level one, so their character is definitely not. Mm -hmm. If you are starting out at higher play, you can do that. And you don't have to feel rushed. Like, I, I am a fan of milestone leveling. Um, but the disparity between level one and level 20 is great enough that it will, there is very little time span that it will feel natural. Mm, yeah. um, and I yeah. Yeah, the the way I think the 
the way that I structured it with Argot, it felt very unnatural once you guys were there. And I think it was because the only other way I'd seen Milestone done was in Barovia. Yeah. And that's how it is with Curse of Strahd is like, I think we found like two milestones back to back. We did. Yeah. And it was it was kind of it felt like, okay, sure, why not? I mean, I'm scared, so I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and with my new campaign in Meritesk, it is a um the milestones are kind of farther away from each other and they're blocked by much more difficult dungeons and situations and stuff than I did with Argot, where it was more like, you know, pop around, find some stuff. There are giants in the sky, mm -hmm. but you know, you'll you'll get your milestones and all of the dungeons are five room dungeons. The dungeons I'm making for Meritesk are dungeons. Yeah. <laughs> they have loops and they have many rooms. <laughs> um they are dangerous as hell. Um but I, I and with that campaign, my intention is to go probably to level twelve. Mm -hmm. Um just because I wrote too many things and I was interested in too many things and I wanted to play certain monsters. Um and didn't want them to feel like completely overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, even though it's totally fine to send CR, you know, 16 month creatures against the, I mean, that's kind of how Curse of Strahd is built. Yeah. Kind yeah. of like Strahd is like CR 15. It's like, you're yeah. level seven, go ahead. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I really love to ignore in the, the books is the CR. The CR. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I feel okay. Because I try to run a game where you, your, the player feels like their character should be in the same amount of danger. From level one to level twenty, yeah. if you go out and you're swinging a sword and there's monsters. You should feel like you're not going to survive. Right. And I feel like a lot of times when you're playing high level parties, the players start to get like a little. I've got a plus fifteen to all of my skills. Sure, I can't fail. I'm like, and it's harder to challenge them when yeah. they get to a certain point. Everything unless like you start <laughs> cheating really hard on the DM side. And yeah. by cheating, I just mean you know uh, creative minds. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things, things I love is kobolds uh, being beefed up to where they're still doing damage at a higher level or bringing monsters that are or you could use in tier and weakening them enough where like a low level party could still fight them and feel like badass. Uh, and basically, it takes a lot of extra work, but scaling the game to your players instead of scaling your players to the game. Yeah. Is I, I, th I think my, my only problem with that is that it doesn't feel as realistic. You know what I mean? Where it's like a lot of these monsters and you as the as the characters, you guys feel like bags of hit points with, you know, more and more powerful like attack bonuses and stuff like that. And it's like everything starts scale, 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 scale. Like and I like, can summon a meteor now. <laughs> yeah. And like and like the only thing that gets really big is the magic. And yeah, then yeah. the martial fighters, obviously, it's kind of like, we'll give you something. Um, but you know, they they also feel like kind of godlike as well. But yeah. I think like <laughs> knock never being able to die. <laughs> yeah. But like these I don't know. I, I I think like it feels a little bit more unrealistic and I think presenting them with challenges. I, I think the, the reason that I would um that I previously I was like, oh let me do milestone and let me level them up quickly because I want them to face these more interesting monsters that are right. sort of like yeah. in mid tier, like Onis and Giants and stuff. But um you just make a scale down, like you were saying. Yeah. Like, but like, I feel like scaling down makes more. It feels more right than scaling up. One thing I that I struggle with is like because the thing, the thing that I want to be able to do, and this is very system specific, but like I want to be able to use magic the way I want. I want to be able to go in and like be able to do things that I feel are like cool or interesting or that my brain comes up with, which yeah. don't always fit into a low level sheet. Right. Um, but I also want there to be that sort of like tightrope that I'm walking, which makes it feel more like a game, I guess. Yeah, right. Like, how am I going to do this? And like, I think that high level play in Monster of the Week looks very different than in Pathfinder or D and D or something that's a little bit more um, structured. Because high level play in uh, Powered by the Apocalypse means you have more levers to pull and more narrative power. But from the very beginning, you can be like, I want to try to pull a meteor out of the, the sky. Then the DM, the, the GM can be like, yeah, so that's going to be big magic. And this is what you're going to need for it. Like yeah. from level one kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And so um, you get a book and a coven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you need to sacrifice seven people in order to do it kind of thing. Yeah. And, and then you can make your choice from there. Um, whereas in 
some of the more kind of regimented systems, it's like, you can't even think about doing this yet. (laughs) It's because it's like uh, you were talking about with your mom um, that she wanted to do some like some magic that is a high level play uh, right away. Yeah. Um, And you were sort of like, you feel like one day this is possible, but you just don't have it in you. Monster of the Week, you can just do that. Yeah, Yeah, you can just try for it. Um, And it kind of makes it feel like you can't take big swings at lower levels in the way you want to. It's, It's the scaling thing, too. Because in Monster of the Week, you always have seven hit points. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing changes. And that is, I mean, the hit point bloat is absolutely something, especially in, in D&D, uh, specifically, I guess, um, or Fighter, or whatever. I hate the hit point. I will be honest. <laughs> yeah. It does suck. My favorite. Um, but I mean, big numbers feel good, but at the same time, like, instead of 199 hit points, why don't we always have 20, but then the yeah. monsters do more? right it's just like yeah or the or you just have to find different ways to defeat each monster yeah you know it's not yeah or you get a bigger bag of hit points every time yeah and it could even be like every person has 20 hit points your ac just keeps going up with your level but like higher cr monsters just have a bigger chance to hit you you know what i mean and it's like they're still doing similar damages actually i mean yeah increasing the ac is uh, i think a very interesting way to do that personally I um, you know, I I I really feel that you know, scaling is important, but I think that it's also interesting to still have the characters interact with things that haven't been scaled up and down. Because you know, and Franco, you're a big fan of presenting your players with moral quandaries, uh-huh. and <laughs> for me, high level play is a chance for the players a really big moral correct <laughs> you have an immense amount of power mm-hmm. what are you going to do with that and um you know i think that that's an interesting question but you know i i, I won't i won't deny it. it's it's one that you have to be very careful with how you approach it and another cool thing that you can do with high level play is like like you were saying with like the different counters like you can have like you can have your level twenties like fight a bunch of, I don't know, goblin minions that yeah. you know they met you know maybe like two years before. Mm. It's the same army, and then you guys fight them, and then this time you're just you're just wrecking him. You're yeah. just wrecking house. That was a really good moment in our Barovia campaign because mm-hmm. you know as you go you roll and bandits attack, and at low level it's really sort of you become yes. the threat. Yeah, but what, later on the party split up and. uh our road. That's Raphael. Raphael. Raphael was on his own and he, he just... killed six bandits because it was like it's on like, his own. Like this is what it is. You roll to it that you can't really miss mm-hmm. unless you roll like a six or less. Right. And your damage is way above there. So yeah. I think he was like in two rounds, he killed six yeah. bandits. He was a swap right where he was in great stand. Yeah. Um <clears> and we were like worried for a second. Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was like, such oh. a badass moment because, you know, narratively, yeah. cinematically, uh, you know, you it can works. kind of imagine that. Yeah. yeah. This guy, totally you works. know, he just smirks and then he pulls out the rapier. And, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, another thing that's interesting would be to, uh, in high level play, instead of can letting, I mean, big numbers feel good. So I guess that is part of the reason why you let people roll. But like, I remember going into um, the windmill and this wasn't even mm. like super high level play. This was like nine or 10, right? I thought it was like 12, but 12. Yeah. But near the end of the first season, so 10 to 12. Yeah, okay. So we were in this sort of windmill that was like a bandit hideout of this like um, mercenary the force. Golden eyes. Yeah, that had been, that was kind of like a guild that was up and coming that we were, that was also very much bad and run by a beholder. Um, but there was a point where I was like underneath a wagon and I like came out and I was like, I really want to like Assassin's Creed style, just like grab this guy, like cut him and then pull him under the wagon with me. And you were like, yeah, you're high enough level that this works. And I you basically just do it. <laughs> yeah, and you and you were saying like you basically like cut and then there was like another character that was being introduced that saw this and I was like, shh, like pull the <laughs> under the wagon. Yeah. <laughs> um and like I think that that is a fun way to do high level play too of being like we roll less because yeah. you can do more. Again, more um, narrative control. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it's it kind of sucks in some regard because it all it's almost like you're saying, well, gosh, the only thing standing in the way of my fun is the game rules. <laughs> <laughs> if I could get rid of those, I'll have even more fun. But at the same time, 
those rules will give you uh, certain tools and, you know, being able to pull something off with those, I mean, it, it just feels amazing. Um, you know, not having to worry about, um, gosh, I guess after I think ruids get like an eternal life. Is that right? And fifth Aegis body, Aegis yeah. body, and yeah. And that's like the highest level capstone, right? Yeah, paladins yeah. do Pal too. Right? Paladins become Aegis and immortal like at level seventeen or something. <laughs> yeah, and, and for druids, Monks, it's, druids and paladins yeah. all sort of like our bodies mortal decay. They become We're lobsters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's kind of lobster cool classes. To yeah. like, <laughs> especially if you put that against like, um, you know, we had uh, it, it when we first kind of started. I think doing these twenty level experiments was the first psycho seizure dome i ran and a wizard human wizard uh level 20 entered a a, a tower on the battlefield <laughs> and ran into a room full of ghosts and that Got motherfucker obliterated. aged quick yeah um which you know mattered on a few fronts because he was human if he was an elf or something like that it wouldn't have mattered as much but you know that would have been cool if it was a druid in that moment, because they would have just been like, that doesn't fucking matter at all. Yeah, I don't age. Yeah, and that's great being able to actually get to use that. Um, right. You know, that's 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 the other thing. I just, I, I want more toys to play with. Yeah, I definitely feel the, the desire to have more stuff in the toolbox. It, it's just like, I don't know, I... I, I get stuck. There's there's too many things to choose from. Mm. I was like, I'm I don't know what I'm doing. Should I have a maximum anymore. of seven abilities, <laughs> like seven uh, seven uh, feats or actions or features or whatever. Yeah, I, spells. I, I yeah, it's just tough. I I love the narrative abilities that come with this. Like, but I also just remember you summoning that like greater demon. Us uh, stealing her staff away and then just beating the hell out of her in one turn. And like, you were like, I guess this is over. This like huge pivotal encounter. That Three we sessions. Playing. She was on her way. You guys were dealing with like, it was like, what are you going Half to do? an She's... hour we dealt with her. <laughs> like, it was like, it was just oh, very we have quick a quick combat. We, we stealth. And I was like, oh, okay. And then you all rolled over your stealth check. So you got the surprise round. Yeah. And then you just surprise round. You just, she had the surprise condition. Yeah. She was surprised. And, we, and then you disarmed her, yeah. so took her weapon away. I disarmed her. And then someone stunned yeah, I her. her. Yeah, so there was you just command. a lot. I've if they don't have a man work. Is, which is the exact <laughs> moment I stopped playing my boss monsters as single monsters. I was like, they need more than one turn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they yeah. need multiple actions. They need to be immune to charm, stun, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. If there's going to be a named villain, then video game rules. Yeah. These attacks don't work on boss creatures. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I also, well, for, so for um, Northwood, the game that I'm going to be running for you soon, mm. I, I, all the secrets. <laughs> I, I've developed a system where because of certain things that I can't really reveal, but like you can spend however many spell slots you want in a day. But every time you go over your allotted amount, you take that number off of your permanent hit point. For the rest of the game. Oh, interest. Yeah. So is this you, fifth edition? Fifth edition. So I interest like, you in an OSR game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, why not? I love it. Um, but I think that that would over time actually balance it out a little bit more in my favor. Where if I throw things at you guys and your spellcasters and you t need to use those resources, by the time you're level like 12, instead of having 120 hit points or whatever, you have 80, which is a lot easier to to plan for you this is I mean? one to 12 uh, i don't know we'll see oh, okay uh, it depends on what they want to do <laughs> <laughs> um through in the telling there yeah. is a i mean the person the person who rules over um northwood is uh sort of like the necro lord supreme the kind of god emperor that's been there for well, is he eating years. our health in exchange for magic powers you're the crunch wrap <laughs> i'm the crunch wrap <laughs> oh no oh. um but yeah so it's still sort of like you guys could work your, all your way up to try to figure out the big secrets, or you could just try to do your time as a wallman. And that's it. So mm. we'll see. Wall person. Well, well, I mean, they're called wallman. Like, it's one word. <laughs> it's not wallman. <laughs> it's a woman. <laughs> so. So 
I, I wonder what tips would you offer for DMs trying to, uh, you know, to, to have high level play? Start at a low level. <laughs> okay, but like what, once up. they get there, like what, what, what tips for kind of balancing things and, and making it interesting? Do, do shit that is epic enough to justify it. You know, because like I feel, feel like the thing is like I, the reason that I'm capping my other, my current 5e campaign at like 12 ish or so is because like I don't really have any ideas mm -hmm. for um like big crazy stuff because I feel like I don't know like have them go have them drive a spell jammer ship and traverse the omniverse you know like have them have them like I don't know do like super epic shit and like fight dragons or like I don't know like the I, scale of story has to yeah it yeah. has to it has to expand like you are now like I think I think the <clears throat> the 5e even says this yeah like it's, oh, yeah. it says like oh it literally you know, one says to five in, yeah regional yeah. whatever and then it like the, I, I forget what all the levels are it goes like it, it's, is it's planar. it's planar, like yeah <laughs> adventurer hero like king yeah like and then like god powers, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. essentially what you're doing it's like with. what yeah the tier play is so like make sure you're giving them that type of thing like make them feel like they gods that they are <laughs> yeah there's an interesting um thing in south korean uh comics right now that is yeah. like this trope of constellations that as your story grew and you became so powerful that you sort of like ascended your form and became the like epitome of that mm -hmm. story that is oh. now being you know and, and a lot of times in south korean comics it's sort of like those people using those constellations they're called to sort of like pull down power and to try to like survive these crazy situations and I feel like you could like kind a genre? of, it's kind of, it's just like a trope that is okay. used quite often. Huh. Um, and it sort of feels like when you get That's to cool. high level campaigns, you can kind of start taking on some of that of like, your story has gotten so powerful that you are being sort of like pulled into other situations where your story is told as Ooh, like. That could be like Sigra. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you kind <laughs> of immortal. show up as. Um, 500 year paladin. Yeah. Um, so you could do stuff like that. But I, to make upper level play way more like speedy as well use monsters that auto hit use monsters yep. that have nice. hot like they deal a lot of damage and i would say like i really don't like making it so that your powers that you got at lower levels just essentially became become useless but then it's not giving you the, as right. much stuff in the toolbox yeah. It's almost like if you get to level 15 maybe you have like a whole section of the adventure that's like you are a upper noble within this court, and the king is like, a rebellion is brewing. You have to help me figure out where the corrupt yeah. nobles are and like deal with it. And then you can use like your reading minds and you're like commanding people and you're doing stuff and you're always being able to be successful, but you're dealing with something that's way bigger than what a level five can deal with, you know? Yeah. 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 It's kind of what it was like back in the day, because it'd be like you you get to level ten or it's like fifteen if you're a human or I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but like you, you would get to yeah yeah it was very weird like you would get to whatever the capstone level was and then you're just like okay now you're the king you're an npc mm -hmm. you maybe you become a dungeon master you build a dungeon yeah and then or like you have your lackeys or whatever or like with um with Ico knights like shade is gonna do you know we're level 20s on a spell jammer but we have like minions or not minions but you know minions. yeah we'll, we'll have a stable of characters <laughs> stable and, of characters and yeah. there will be adventures that require us to be lower level sometimes mm -hmm. and parts of the parts of the multiverse that um you know you're you're not level 20 there because the magic works differently there right? yeah like because I, your constellation isn't as powerful uh, as these other right. realities yeah, like, an interesting concept for running games like that is to be like okay we've got to level 16 times past we're starting your level 11 now you're not at oh, your you, peak oh. you lost it I yeah, lost you're, out of, uh, you're out of practice yeah that's so the game takes i think like i was reading somewhere that a typical campaign is like three months of your character's life so they yeah. go from nothing to oh big power yeah and time passes atrophy happens and you're, you can start over with like okay you're not as strong as you were and now you can choose a different path. Like if you, you went a straight fighter, now maybe you take some ranger. Cause yeah, yeah, and then, and then if, you're, if you're like a magic user, you start like forgetting spells or something yeah. like that. And then I would even say um, uh, hit points aren't uh, hit points aren't health points. They're hit protection. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, yeah. Concept. it's your your will to keep fighting before like, yeah. you succumb. Yeah, that can mean anything. I also yeah. think that um, like I have a character I really run want to run that would start out as a low level character, but was like a seasoned mercenary that lost their leg. Mm-hmm. And basically, I'm saying like level one again because they have to learn how to fight with either a prosthetic or without a leg or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. They're just like relearning the ropes essentially. Yeah. Um, and I think that you can kind of do that in high level play too, where you're like, hey, like in this huge battle, this dragon comes and he bites, roll, hit goes past your AC, you take X amount of damage and it bites your arm off. And it's like, how does that affect how you're going to play your character? Yeah, you know, I think. I, I do think that um, in that particular scenario, like having it uh, be, you know, the character you're describing, obviously he's taken time yeah. and that atrophy has set in. Mm-hmm. But I think in the, um, in, in like the, the midst of high level play, if you're in the middle of a campaign, obviously, you know, I wouldn't set someone back levels. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I've heard people that had creatures that ate levels that they would just like, Instead uh, of doing yeah. the ghosts did that. Yeah, like there's Two certain ghosts. There's certain monsters that yeah. like instead of dealing damage, they would just suck down experience points and everything. Yep. And like at that at that level, that's more damaging to you as a and more fear causing than a hit points lost because mm-hmm. you probably have a cleric with some I people used crazy to do that with paper and pencil. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. Yeah. Uh, um one of the things that I personally will um would advise for for high level play is um you don't really want the okay so you do you do want them to be in situations that make sense uh for right. for level 20 and things like that but you don't want to limit it to those um i do think that you know to your point daniel with uh with that rogue with Raphael, you do want to give them a couple of times uh, mm-hmm. every now and again where oh yeah no they're outclassing this mm-hmm. um just so that they can kind of see that um but you also just never really want to have them uh, outnumber anything yeah i mean throw them into helm's deep right yeah, like they right. can divide be, and conquer them. yeah they can be mm-hmm. legolas riding down the stairs on a shield shooting five orcs killing them all instantly but there's yeah. 200 more that are at the gates kind of thing so it's like the threat is still there they get to feel like, well, I did something fucking crazy. And yeah. then they are also like, I'm still in a very bad situation. Yeah. <laughs> How do you run 200 works? Um, as one stat block. <laughs> yeah, that's where you move. I would definitely, yeah, one stat block. And also, I think I once stuff. ran like 100 zombies as a swarm. And just yeah. had the size of the horde shrink as mm, it yeah, likes to. You could have like 200 hit points and all of the zombies have one hit point. So it's like you're basically winnowing. Yeah. yeah. Skeletal cool. Swarm is a creature. I don't know where it was introduced, but yeah, I think that's... Skeletal. How about for OSR and other games for high level play? Um, um there's no high level play in OSR. <laughs> well, what, well in OSR, what if they have like really great equipment that's just like um, yeah, it like it's yeah. it's just like Gonzo crazy weird shit, you know? You're just like <laughs> you're just like, yeah, this this thing can do like a million points of damage or whatever, and yeah. then but then it's also like eating your soul. <laughs> You know, this thing like, does a million damage and eats your soul. <laughs> yeah, I think like I think uh, the idea that like power is danger. Yeah, is a is a really big part of it. And the thing about five E is that like power is control. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you have it, and you're holding on to it. Um, and the game I'm designing, like I'm using, I don't know if it's gonna work or not because I haven't actually play tested it. But um, Goblin Laws of Gaming uh, has this thing called mana, mana dice, and basically every time you cast a spell you roll a d6 equal to however many mana dice you might have or want to spend. Mm -hmm. You have, like, a pool of them. Um, And if you roll doubles or triples, bad things happen. Um, But the the sum or the number of dice can also impact how powerful your spell is. Like, if if you're like, oh, I want to deal, like, 3d6 damage with this lightning bolt or something to, like, take out this monster... Like okay, I hope you don't roll a triple. Yeah. But if you if you roll, I mean, if you roll three sixes, like you do eighteen damage. Yeah. But then also your, your doom happens. clock is gonna start yeah. start mm-hmm. running down. Um. So like this idea in in the old school revival games is like like this magic and and like power is like that stuff is dangerous as hell. Yeah. Um. And that's fun. I do like that. Yeah. I I think that that could be really fun. It's sort of like in yeah. 
high level monster of the week, basically I was just like ramping up what the monsters hit you with so that you'd have yeah. to start using luck points as a resource. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, okay, this thing hits you for five or six or whatever. And you're like, I can't take that. <laughs> Um, and then another thing is, um, I, I was just thinking about this while you say it, like I, a little hack you could do, I guess, is that if you said, all right, you cast spells over the fifth level with like, even with a spell slot, roll against your spell save. And if you roll under your spell save, you just like can't control this huge magic that you're channeling. And then something yeah. weird happens. Like when hmm. you roll a double. There, yeah. There's roll. aside from wild magic, there's not really anything in 5e that lets no. things get out of control. Yeah. Like the idea when you're level 20 is like, you're a practiced magic user like you were you're good to go like you know everything you've read all your books man yeah. you got your degree you're good I, I mean another thing about um powered by the apocalypse that i love is that even when you're a high ass level you can just roll like shit so and hard. get kicked in the face you know it's just yeah. like like uh especially with magic with like the glitches and the stuff that goes wrong the glitches and yeah, magic are so i think that's good. like that's probably one of my favorite mechanics for i mean for other powered by the apocalypse games too because like the tapping into the weird for yeah. um uh for apocalypse world yeah like so many bad things can happen yeah it, it's it's very um again i i've been painting a lot of warhammer so i've been reading some lore eh? and it's very much like every time a psyker uses a psychic ability in warhammer which is essentially their magic they are opening their mind up to a literal manifestation of hell and so it's like <laughs> every time they do this they're like looking into the abyss and it's looking straight back and so yeah, it's like apocalypse world yeah so everyone everything with uh everyone in warhammer are like oh you're a psyker i have my gun pointed at your head if right before you do your spell just in case <laughs> oh, yeah Fair. yeah Fair. there's Fair. even like a web animation called astartes where they're like literally escorting this like tech priest in to like do something the tech priest starts doing some like weird psychic bullshit immediately gets possessed and then without hesitation they just punch his head off <laughs> it's just there like crazy. very grim dark mm. um cool any other final thoughts on yeah uh, one yeah. last thing i will say is um you know I, I think we've mentioned it in other episodes before but sometimes at high level play um well i can just teleport my problems away sure that's somewhere else and that still exists in the greater scheme yeah you know, the grand scheme of things like just moving something somewhere else is not really a solution. Um, and you should absolutely be leading them back to that or creating repercussions for them um, displacing. Them. But another a, a great thing you can do at higher level play is do something like a Tarrasque, which isn't really a creature. It is sort of a force of nature well like literally in the thing that i was reading it's like you really like technically should not be able to kill this thing and it's really at higher levels how do you deal with this kind of unstoppable disaster <laughs> yeah i mean it it's just it's got flowery language in its description yeah. stat block is still a creature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so any other final thoughts on high level play here's a thought i yeah. put no time into uh minimum <laughs> hp but if you're going to play a high-level game, make your players have, the, have the average or less. Whoa. Don't let them don't let them go up. So like they, you still have that control. Your characters are still in danger. Yeah. You don't have 300 hit points. So yeah, just a thought. Franco? I really look forward to killing my 20 characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you kill Tibbity, you're going to have everyone mad at you. <laughs> he is a literal golden retriever turned person. You cannot kill Tibbity. <laughs> you can kill Sensi. She killed Strahd twice. <laughs> uh, Franco, any final thoughts? No. Great. All right. <laughs> well, then, <laughs> we will talk to you all later. If you go to our website and you have a question that this conversation inspired, or you just have another question uh, in general, we are still accepting questions for mailbag episodes. Go to our website, tabletoppod.com, scroll on down on that homepage, and there's our contact form. Just fill it out, send it in, it'll get to us. If you want, you can also join the discussion with us on our Discord by going to that same website and hitting the little Discord button up in the upper right-hand corner, and you'll be invited to our special secret server. All right, uh, we'll talk to you all very soon. Bye! Go, go, bye! Go level up. Goodbye.
The world is electric with psychic energy, an interconnected web of memory and emotional echoes that only animals are able to perceive. Nowhere is that energy more powerfully present than in human trash. Psychic Trash Detectives is the first release from Scripted Games. In this collaborative tabletop role-playing game, players create their own psychic trash animals like raccoons and possums. They mine trash for psychic clues to solve a mystery plaguing their animal community. It is a game that absolutely reeks of radical self-acceptance and punk camaraderie. You can pledge Psychic Trash Detectives now on Kickstarter. Live fast, touch trash, solve mysteries.